Welcome to another Wise Guys, the boy Coolish Core. Right now, I'm here with Big Homie Tiny. What they do, what they do. Straight from the A. <laughs> so, I'm gonna start off with where you, where you got your name from? Big Homie Tiny. I got, well, my name is Tiny, and I got the Big Homie part because, you know, I've been Big Homie in these streets, you know what I'm saying? But no, <laughs> my producer Stroud really gave me the name because he just, everybody was already, you know, Big Homie. Yeah. What's up, Big Homie? This, that. I yeah. thought it was like Rich Homie Quan type of vibes from it. You know what no. I'm saying? Are you like a fan of Rich Homie? Or like I, a... I always love Rich Homie Quan. <laughs> okay, okay. But it's Big Homie right here. Oh, you big? I'm homie. Big Homie. So so where you from? You I'm from, from the east side. East, east side Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. what is, is that like uh, Decatur, Tucker? Like what, what area is east side Atlanta? I mean, I'm, I'm from Decatur too. Yeah. But it's like... East Atlanta started Edgewood, Kirkwood type shit. And then it ended where Panola, <laughs> Panola Road at. So I'm, I've been everywhere in between now. Got you. So what is it like growing up on the east side of Atlanta? Well, I grew up there and Marietta because my mama didn't want me to go to all these black schools. Yeah. So growing up in different places is just different. I liked it better on the east side though yeah. because it was more fun being around people that understood me. Yeah, so so the other side wasn't really, it was weird on the other side growing up? It was okay, but it's still like, I don't know. I hung out with the basketball people, yeah. like the sports people. So it was like mostly black people. Gotcha. <laughs> I didn't know how else to say it. It, it was more black people. Wrong with that, you know? You know, yeah. a lot of black people play certain sports, so. Yeah, so you play sports? Mm -hmm. Basketball is my number one. You like a volleyball player though, I ain't gonna cap. Like my ass, huh? Cause my ass be no, nah, that you know, just the volleyball. Like you just more into volleyball. Mm mm. I can never get into volley volleyball. Mm mm. So you first came. Your first song. Your first single was Jelly, right? Mm hmm. What What made you um come up with that idea, that concept? Because your ass was because your ass and all the attention. <laughs> because of it my just... ass and everybody else's ass. Hell, the motherfucker just be. We just said like. What's something that girls say when they be like shaking their ass and shit like that? And I was like, hell, that shit move like jelly. Them motherfucking moving, moving crazy type shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you came up with the whole concept. Yep. Right there. I, li I like the great jelly version better though. The great jelly version of jelly. Okay, fuck you. Do you? You don't like, you don't like, you don't like <laughs> the original better? Shit. You like the original better? I like both of them. The grape jelly just more up tempo, but that's my. Jelly Jelly is my baby. Yeah. So don't talk about my baby. Hey man, I like, <laughs> you got you got to respect the flavor I like. My flavor. I I respect it. Yeah. Don't don't let that come out your mouth again. <laughs> Honestly, I like it. So what did you learn from going on a jelly tour? I know you saying you went on a jelly tour and you went to different cities and you were mm -hmm. performing. What 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 um experience did you gain from that? I learned that there's a difference between ratchet clubs and country clubs. Country ass niggas. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what do you mean by that? Look, them ratchet clubs, that shit be fun. That shit, like, everybody just be lit, ready to party. They was just, I don't know, they was lit. Like, Savannah was lit. They was ratchet. And, like, in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Savannah was lit. But, Jacksonville? Uh, <laughs> I didn't play. Man. I didn't play. I didn't play. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, but it was some other cities. It was like it was some country ass show. I'm like, oh, these so motherfuckers like they're ready to fight. Jacksonville is a country city when you went. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying it because she right there. <laughs> Damn. No, nah, but it was a lot of these clubs. It was like motherfuckers just like they were ready to fight or something. Yeah. Like they weren't ready to have fun. It's just niggas just posted like, yeah, yeah try me, big bees, big yeah. seed, yeah. So when, even when you was performing, they didn't get. The, the females ain't get turned on? I mean, it was, eh, eh. Yeah. It wasn't really interactive how they supposed to be. Because everybody loved it. They just wanted to fight or something. Yeah. Hey, I thought these motherfuckers wanted to fight me already. Yeah. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ratchet shit. I like the ratchet shit. You got to pop pussy when I come around. Got you. So, speaking of pop pussy, you got the uh, the new single Freaks coming. So, so how did you get into that, that one? So, freak, how did freak come around? <laughs> I don't even know how to explain that you one. You don't smoke, so it ain't like you in the studio smoking, getting high, and coming over this shit. You just like. Really no, I'm thinking. just eating, sucking, um, sucking the wings. 
<laughs> I'm sucking the meat off a wing. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> okay, dude. Okay. How did. Yeah. Freak came. Mm. Lifestyle. Just lifestyle. Uh, yeah. The crazy lifestyle you live. <laughs> So you said the music video, what when that drop? Music soon. video dropping soon. Very soon. Okay. <laughs> and what what's the concept? The concept is we're gonna take y'all to church. Freak? Is it gonna take you to church? Mm -hmm. Look, don't be acting like you ain't never heard a motherfucker say they they fucked in church. Oh. Yeah, some motherfuckers done fucked in church. They done got their dick sucked in church. A lot of motherfuckers done did some shit. Have you been in church? I haven't. I haven't. Okay. But you heard. Then. The most I done did is shake my ass in the church. So, okay. <laughs> like when you was praising, or like you really was in a. Oh no, I was really in there popping pussy. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, so be on the lookout for that. So you came. You you started off as a dancer, right? Mm-hmm. What was what was that life like? Because then you get a lot of stories on. Uh, just the lifestyle like is it something that you know you got to do consistently is it something you can do every now and then like what dancing yeah um because a lot of girls now they you know they be working out like they, it's like a whole lifestyle that comes with being a stripper honestly i was a twerker before anything yeah and then i moved to stripping so i was already like in shape and then being on a pole had me even more in shape i don't like working out that's, yeah. that's the only workout I like to do. So gotcha. the pole definitely had my body right. And some, for some girls, yeah, they they work out and shit, but a lot of them be working out to keep their butt shots and shit in place. Oh, so that's real. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get a BBL and all that extra shit, you got to keep that shit right and tight, keep it in place, so that shit going to start drooping down or just looking crazy. You got to oh. work out. You gotta get massages, all that. They ain't tell me that. Yeah, they ain't gonna tell nobody that. <laughs> oh shit, they ain't tell me that. That's why I'm big homie. I, I give information. <laughs> okay. I need that. So, so have you ever worked at like you danced at like G Five, Strokers, my you know Magic City? Like, which one is your I have, favorite? At all of them? I not uh Magic City. Um, I danced at G Five in Miami before, and never again will I do that. Okay. Um, there was there was a uh, trash. Okay. The money was trash. First of all, paying three hundred dollars to work and then leaving with like eighty dollars, nah. Yeah. Mm -mm. But they really just came to see Latinas. Okay. Or the famous bitches that were down there. So at the time that was like Miami tip and persuasion and shit. So yeah. What about um King of Diamonds in Atlanta? I ain't about, never think about going there. I ain't never worked there. Okay, you know. They they built that up after I been done dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, nah. Um, I worked at Follies and Babes. Yeah. I heard about Follies. Follies was definitely one of the biggest clubs here. Yeah. It used to be. R.I.P. Follies. <laughs> R.I.P. She was your your first your first um what's coming first like the mixtape or album? Have you decided on which one coming first? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but yeah. I'm thinking a mixtape. Mixtape? Yeah. You got the title for it? Might just do Big Homie. Big Homie? Yeah. You ain't bullshit about this Big Homie shit. I don't know. No. I want everybody to be like, oh yeah, that's Big Homie right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want nobody to second guess. Yeah. That's yeah. me. They gonna know this name. So in the, you gonna have um, features on the mixtape? Mm-hmm. Can you name a few? Name drop a few? Um, <laughs> nope. <Damn. laughs> I mean, well, she, I know you said you want to work with Drake, Lil Baby, and Rihanna. Mm -hmm. So, like, using those three, like, or are those are three different, like, genre, like, type of music you will be making? Yeah. Like, I'm very versatile. Even though I got this country ass voice, I'm very versatile. Yeah. And so I want to do, I want to show everybody how I could do with other artists, like different kind of artists. Yeah. Doing different kind of shit. Like, so I what, can do pop, all that. Which, uh, if you can get one of them on the phone, though, who you, who you, would you get, though? If I could get one of them on the phone? Yeah, like right now, out of them three, who would you get first? Who would you call? Probably, damn. 
Well, that would be between Drake and Rihanna. I'd probably say Drake. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If I get Drake on the phone right now, it's up. <laughs> All right. So, OnlyFans. So, do you have only? You have OnlyFans? I do have OnlyFans. What, what's on that? What? What? Uh, like just like content, crazy shit. I mean, it's. There's things on there. I need. I, I need to add that. I need. To, <laughs> I was going. I was too busy driving. I couldn't pay for it. <laughs> but OnlyFans. What? So when you created that? Uh, I created my OnlyFans hell years ago. Honestly. Yeah. When OnlyFans was like really popping. And yeah, you think it didn't dry it up now? Like. Yeah, it didn't dry it up because everybody on it now. Like yeah. everybody, even all these goddamn celebrities just taking pictures in their bikinis and shit. Everybody on the shit. Yeah. So yeah. So it's like nowhere to go for a nigga. No yeah. Every, every time, I feel like every time it's something jumping, like especially these days, and the celebrities know about it, they gonna just, once they get into it, it's kind of like. Mm -hmm. Once they find a way to make money off of it, yeah. It's over. Yeah. They so, can make one, they could be like not doing shit. Make one post talking about subscribing to my OnlyFans, boom, 20 million. Yeah. Doing that. Doing nothing. Fucking it up. Huh. How you um? So how did you link up with the dude uh ATI keynote? Cause see y'all got a track together called OnlyFans. Mhm. Mm <laughs> um, that came together through my producer Scrow. Um, yeah, that's my dog now. But yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know how that happened. But they just wanted a feature, and I said, "Shit, let's do it." Yeah. Then I heard a song like, "Oh, this motherfucker hard." Like yeah. his, his voice hard as fuck. Like it's, I don't know, his voice hard as fuck. I love yeah. that song. So I had to go in. <laughs> yeah. So council culture, man, you see what's you see what's going on with, with Travis Scott, like that situation. Like that don't, <sighs> that don't scare you because like doing shows, somebody get hurt, like it's your fault type shit. Yeah, but it's like I feel like motherfuckers can't really blame him for what's going on in the crowd. Yeah. Like y'all the motherfuckers that want to do the drugs and shit and all that extra shit y'all want to make mosh pits you don't know what the fuck going on in the mosh pits y'all just pushing each other around and all that extra shit jumping around i like to be aware of my surroundings anyway so yeah mm -mm, i don't know but they should have sound like a i would have had motherfuckers sound a liability for them or something yeah, I mean, like, it ain't like fault. you performing, you can't really see. I mean, what, yeah, you can't going see on. what's going on in a crowd of thirty thousand people. Hell, if, if not more, I can barely see what's going on in a crowd of fifty people. So yeah, shit, you can't blame somebody for that. Yeah, man, it's that cancel culture though. Like that shit, they can't try to cancel you for anything. Man, they ain't gonna, they can't cancel Travis Scott. It ain't yeah. his fault. Yeah. So you don't, you don't think that's going like you don't think that's like a hinder for like upcoming artists like to make you do it it make you like not want to do it seeing how they just quick to try to cancel you for anything or go back in your past or cancel you for shit I mean, they could try i don't give a fuck yeah. <laughs> you big home yeah <laughs> period so you, well you got a ghetto story for me ghetto story a ghetto story i mean you gotta share one what ghetto <laughs> growing up Okay, y'all know them uh them cereals, Honey Smacks. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> back then, like when I was young, young, we were living in a house house, and we had like you know them little baby roaches that scatter everywhere when <laughs> when you turn the lights on. Yeah. Yeah. So one of them was in my cereal, no. and but yeah, but they blended in with the Honey Smacks, no. then crunched down on the goddamn. <laughs> you ate a roach. Down, <laughs> I ate a roach. Oh, shit. <laughs> Protein. <laughs> it was. It was protein. <laughs> <laughs> How you knew you ate it though? Huh? How you knew you ate it? Though? It just something tasted different. When I spit it out, it was goddamn crunched up roach. Damn. It was just. It was, it was a, a different one. texture. All the extra shit. It wasn't. When, it wasn't what serious supposed to be. Damn it, man. <laughs> That's definitely good. Uh, <laughs> oh well, y'all ever had a hot sauce sandwich? A who? Hot sauce sandwich. No, nah, what I do? Hot sauce and bread. <laughs> you turn. That's why I love hot sauce so much. Put that on everything. I do. Shit, what? You got like advice for any upcoming artists that's like watching you? Because I mean, when I did, when we went live the other day, last time, it was a lot of artists hit me up saying like, they like, they listen to music. So you got people watching you. Like, do you um have any advice for those people? Um, just don't be scared, cause. You couldn't tell me three years ago that I was going to be doing music, period. 
because I would have looked too crazy. But I just say, don't be scared because you never know what can happen. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So, and for the ladies, don't be afraid to shake that ass and misbehave. 